Hello everyone, my name is Asha Shell Charles from the Irvington Public Library. For today's story time, I'll be reading the third book of the Una the Mermaid book series, Una in the Arctic by Kelly DiPuccio and Riza Figura. If you want to read the first two books of this series, please check out my previous story time videos. Now on to the story. Una loved surprises. Shiny pearl surprises, coral reef surprises, sandy beach surprises. But when a baby beluga whale unexpectedly appeared one morning in the cove, Una jumped and her basket of shells went flying. How in the world did you get here? Una cooed at the baby. She had never seen a beluga whale in the warm waters where she lived. The poor calf looked lost and frightened. Odo wasted no time trying to make their new visitor feel welcome. Una did the same, offering her a slice of kelp cake. And then another. And another. When the cake was gone, the hungry whale ate 99 sushi rolls, a bucket of chowder, and an entire plate of sea salt cookies. But the whale still looked sad. I think she misses her home, Una whispered to Otto. The young whale began to wail. Uno and Otto agreed. Somehow, they would find her family. Like most treasure hunters, Una had a collection of old ship maps and broken compasses. She tinkered and tapped and tweezed until, ta-da, it worked. After a night of rest, Una Otto and the baby whale set out on their long journey north to cooler waters where belugas made their home. The travelers passed sailboats and swordfish, freighters and fantails. As the temperature dropped, the sea and its creatures became more and more unfamiliar. Una lived in the water, but she knew a thing or two about the sky, and this one looked like trouble, messy trouble. Tricky trouble. Oh no, here comes a storm kind of trouble. The waves grew as tall as mountains. An angry swell tossed Una into the air. The compass! Una reached for it. But it was too late. The weary crew took shelter with the king crabs and waited out the storm. When the Arctic Sea finally calmed down, Una examined the map. It was badly torn and useless. How would they ever find their way? Una shivered. The cold water became strangely still as a giant iceberg pushed toward them like a ghost ship. Do they swim to the right or to the left? Una didn't know. She felt like crying, but there wasn't time. The pushy, pushy iceberg was about to crush them. Swim right, she ordered. Una dove through the icy waters with renewed confidence. She couldn't follow her map, but she could follow her heart. Una hoped she was done with surprises, but the ocean had one more in store for her. The mermaid's name was Siku, which meant ice. Her adorable friend was Star. Otto was starstruck. He flipped, he yipped, oops, he tripped. The girls giggled. Una explained that she was trying to return the lost whale to her home. I can help, Siku said enthusiastically. To Galik, she whistled, and a narwhal appeared. His horn pointed the way. When the narwhal could travel no farther, polar bears appeared to offer guidance. Followed by a walrus, a few kind strangers, and a flock of snow geese. For the first time since their adventure began, the young whale smiled and took the lead. Siku grinned. She hears her family. Una smiled with relief. Baby Beluga was home. Una lived in the water, but she knew a thing or two about the sky. 
and this one looked like magic. Happy magic, found magic, a new friend's kind of magic. Thank you everyone for joining me in Una's Adventures. And if you'd like to hear more stories from this channel, please like and subscribe and I will see you next week. Goodbye.